Today we have a 2005 E350. It has a check engine light. We found that the check engine light is a PO191. The PO191 code sets if the fuel pressure goes above 70 psi or below 20 psi. And we're going to go through the steps in order to diagnose what the issue is. With the key in the run position, the pump should only run two to three seconds, then shut off. As you can hear, the pump is running continuously. We now need to determine what is causing that issue. The fuel system on this particular vehicle is a pulse width modulated system. To control fuel pressure in the rail, the driver module controls the speed of the pump, thus controlling the pressure. One of the key factors in this is the fuel rail pressure sensor. The signal from the fuel rail pressure sensor is sent to the ECM. The ECM then monitors that and looks at engine RPM and engine load to determine fuel pressure. Some of the things that can happen if the fuel rail pressure sensor goes bad, we can get an erroneous reading to the ECM and then it not really know how much pressure to get to the fuel rail for the engine to operate properly. We can have an overfueling or an underfueling issue. Here we are monitoring the signal sent from the fuel rail pressure sensor back to the ECM. As you can see, we've got 74.12 PSI. Also, this equates to 4.78 volt. 2.42 volt is maximum system pressure. As you can see, we are far exceeding that. By using a mechanical gauge, we can confirm the readings we got through our scan tool, thus showing that the fuel rail pressure is extreme. With this information from the fuel rail pressure sensor, we now know that it is functioning properly. The next thing we need to check is the fuel pump driver module. The fuel pump driver module is what actually controls the fuel pump speed, shutting the ground off and on rapidly, thus controlling the pressure in the system. One of the first things you need to do in diagnosing a driver module issue is to make sure that the source voltage and the source ground are good. And we can do that by doing just a simple voltage drop test. You need to be sure that the circuit is energized and the load is operating. We can see that we got 0.05 voltage drop on the ground side of the circuit. That is very good. Now we'll do the positive side of the circuit. We've got a 0.05 again on the positive side of the circuit. If we see an excessive voltage drop on either the positive or the negative side of the circuit, we need to fix that problem before we go any further because the power in the ground to the driver module is extremely important in the proper operation of the pump. With our lab scope hooked up to the driver module, the blue trace is the ground side of the fuel pump circuit. As you can see, we've got no duty cycle there and no voltage present. We're looking at the red trace as the signal coming from the ECM to the driver module and we've got about a 5% duty cycle on this signal. On the green trace is the signal going from the driver module back to the ECM and we've got about a 50% duty cycle on this trace. The blue trace should be a duty cycle signal also. But as you can see we have no movement on that trace. That tells me that there's no voltage in that part of the circuit. The driver module is trying to control it but without any voltage coming back from the pump to the driver module, it's unable to ground it to control the pump. That tells us there's a short to ground somewhere between the driver module and the pump. And because in this pulse width modulated circuit, there's voltage supplied to the pump continuously with the key in the run position, with a short to ground, then that would allow the pump to run continuously, and that's what we're experiencing. One thing we need to do before we actually go into the pump is look at the ground side of the circuit between the pump module and the driver module. We can do this by doing a simple voltage drop test with the circuit energized. As you can see, we have zero volt drop. That tells me that the short to ground is not in this portion of the circuit. We should always have a voltage drop if there is voltage present. We'll now do a voltage drop test on the connector of the fuel pump. As the voltmeter shows us, we have a high voltage drop in this part of the circuit. That tells me that the short to ground is somewhere in the hanger assembly itself. We'll now remove the pump to see if we can find the issue in the hanger assembly. Keep in mind, before we remove the pump, we'll need to bleed the pressure off the system and disconnect the negative battery cable. We found that the isolator boot has deteriorated due to fuel contamination. This has allowed the pump case to contact the hanger assembly, which leads to a direct short to ground. In order to properly repair this vehicle, we will remove the tank and thoroughly clean the inside of the tank and install new hanger assembly.